Hey guys, Alex here from alexfigures.com. Now, if you've ever wanted to know how I use my infrared sauna and my red light therapy panels, whether I use them at, on the same day, separate days, morning, night, back to back, uh, then this video is for you. So I get a lot of questions on this topic, so, so stay tuned and I'm gonna share some insights. Okay, so beside me here, I have my Mito Red Light Mito Pro 1500. I'm using this at the moment because I want to test it out for a full review that I'll be publishing on, on my channel soon, so be sure to subscribe for that. And on my other side, I have the Evolve Mini uh, from Sunstream Saunas. This is my go-to, very compact, very powerful uh, infrared sauna that I have here in my home. Now, if you are one of the many that have asked, sent through emails asking me, can you use them back to back? Can you use one before the other and vice versa? How long should you how long should I be using uh, a sauna or red light therapy, then um, unfortunately I don't have any gold standard answer. The reason uh, behind that is the science is, is so vague. Uh, there's articles coming out showing that a certain time period for this treatment, um, but then something completely opposite to that for another treatment. Uh, and the problem with the, a lot of those papers, for instance, is they're looking at spot targeted treatment, not full body. Uh, you've got variables such as power intensity, uh, irradiance. So all these panels, for instance, have different power um, levels. Uh, so the Mito Red might be more powerful than a competitor's product or, or the other way around. Then you've got things such as uh, treatment area, how big is the panel, beam angle and the LEDs, how close you are to the panel, uh, whether you have two of them side by side, whether you're doing this uh, front and back or just one face. There's so many variables, right? So there's no hard and fast rule as in 10 minutes with this panel at this distance. Uh, even though a lot of the, the manufacturers will say that, you know, in the box, use it for X period. And I know some companies have, even have apps where you can put in, you know, your dosage times and your distance and all that. But in all honesty, I, I think it's too, it's too messy if there's no hard and fast rule. The main thing with red light therapy is just to experiment. Just use it a couple times a week and see how you feel. Um, for me personally, when I, in, in my pre-dad days before I was a parent, I was doing it probably about five times a week, anything from 10 minutes to 20 minutes. And I'd typically have two or three of these panels, one on on a wall or on the back of the door here, and then another one on, on, on the side. So I'd have two, two faces, you know, my front face and my side, then I'd turn around and do the same on the other side. I was doing that about five times a week, Monday through to Friday. Uh, in the hindsight, it was probably a little bit too much, now that I don't have as much free time and my routines are quite disrupted uh, being a parent, that um, I'm, I'm only doing it maybe about three times a week. And it's anything from, and when I say three times, I mean three body sessions a week, and I'll get to what I mean about that soon. Uh, and it's anything from two sessions a week right up to maybe four at max. Um, I think there was one week where I did five or six, and that was because my body was had taken a beating from training and, and sun and, and a few other things going on. Uh, so typically now it's it's a couple times a week and it's anything from, yeah, sometimes it's only five minutes because that's all I get. But if I can, I will do a full 20 minute session. And again, my setup, not this current setup right here, but the regular setup I use, I have a couple of panels in front of me and a couple on the side. And again, that's where I'm doing rotating around. And I'll do about 10, 15 minutes in that setup, uh, sometimes 20 minutes. So. That's what I typically do, um, and I still get the benefits. I still see the benefits. I've even gone weeks where I've only done one uh, session a week, and um, I, you know, I know if I drop below that, I start to feel some aches and pains come back, especially with the the tooth. Like that's the main. If you've watched my older videos, that's the main um, indicator for me: the pain threshold that comes back. So. The red light therapy, I'm doing a couple times a week, usually in the evening, I used to do in the morning, but mornings are crazy these days with my little boy, so it's usually in the evening, it hasn't impacted my sleep, I know some people it impacts their sleep, um, and it's it's whatever I can do, five minutes to 20 minutes, uh, and that's what works for me. Uh, if you want a structured plan, then you might say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and the weekend if you've done something physically demanding, uh, and you might do 10, 15, 20 minutes. Again, it depends though on what panel you have. If you have something like this, the Mito Pro 1500, quite a powerful unit, quite large, a lot of LEDs, uh, you're getting a big treatment area. If you can only afford a little unit, then you might want to do 20, 30 minutes. Um, I did mention as well that we're talking about red light therapy, I'm, I'm talking about the full body panel setups. I do have a lot of handheld units now. Uh, I've got one 
here in front of me. Uh, I've just finished reviewing a lot of these and doing a big comparison, so be sure to subscribe for those videos. Um, so I'll use those to treat certain areas, like if I've slipped over on the farm and, and sprained my wrist, I'll be smashing a session on there, sometimes two, three times a day, just five minute sessions. So again, it really does vary. There is no right or wrong, even though people say there is. Uh, I do worry that you can overdo it, um, just like anything in life or in health. Uh, so I, that's why I am doing a little bit less. As for the sauna, now I love the sauna. I mean, yes, there's the health benefits, but there's also just that like end of the day, like sit in a box and sweat for 20, 30 minutes, have a cold shower and you feel a million bucks. Like there's something about that as well. Um, I do saunas less than I do red light therapy. And that's just simply because the time involved, like you really need, well, I need about 25 minutes at least uh, in one of these saunas to get a real good sweat and a real good stress effect. Um, and then you've got the clean up and all that as well. So you've got the shower afterwards, takes you 20 minutes to cool down from the sauna. Um, you know, so it's, it's like a 40 minute block, even up to an hour block. Whereas red light therapy, you can just turn it on away you go and uh, five minutes later you've, you've had a good therapeutic dose, so to speak. So sometimes with the saunas i'm doing three or four a week uh sometimes i might be one or two weeks before i can do a sauna session and yeah, it's just life but if i averaged it out i'd be doing say three of these a week big body sessions and maybe one or two of these a week let's talk about what the science shows and then i'll talk about what i do so one thing i know for for certain you don't want the red light therapy inside the sauna or shining through the glass for instance i have covered that in some other content i think it was my buyer's guide or maybe it was an article on my website we'll put some links below so you can check that out if you have moisture on the body such as sweat or water the red light therapy isn't going to be as effective because it's going to penetrate that light so that's one reason excuse me you don't want to use them together second reason is the heat component uh, if the body is quite heated then red light therapy may not be as effective in fact it, it may be the opposite like it may actually do more damage I do know that um, there are some thoughts out there with some scientific backing that some uh, near infrared wavelengths and mid infrared wavelengths combined with heat exposure can in fact be damaging. So that's why um, I like the Sunstream saunas because they only use far infrared light, whereas red light therapy, the panels that we're, I'm referring to here use near infrared light in them as well, the 850 nanometers. But again, it's, it's very, messy to compare um red light therapy units and some of the science coming out because the wavelengths are so different like near infrared is quite a wide range um but anyway because of that though i just i just don't combine the two it's just easier to have them separated um there's also the safety issue like having electronic electronics near you know sweat and and, and you're drinking water and whatnot so what do i do well typically there's three different methods that i use Method number one is I'm just doing red light. Maybe it's late in the day or I don't have time for the sauna or I don't feel like a sauna. I'll just do a red light session. That's it. Method two is the opposite where I'm just doing infrared sauna. Maybe I've, I've done a couple rounds of red light therapy um, and I just want to have a sauna. Okay, simple. Method three, I actually combine the both in the one treatment protocol. Now I was just saying you shouldn't do this but, but let me explain. When you come in and turn on a sauna, it will typically, or infrared sauna, it will take anything from 10 minutes through to 30, 40 minutes for some of the larger saunas. The reason why I go to this Evolve Mini all the time is because it only takes about 10, 15 minutes to get up to a really hot temperature, which is, which is great. And uh, you can check out my full review on the sauna. I'll put some links below. So what I do is I come in, I'll turn on the sauna, and I'll be all ready for my session. I have my water and my book and whatnot. I'll turn that on. And now while that's heating up, I will come and turn my red light panel on and then I'll do my 10-15 minutes however long I need before I get in there. The reason is I do this before I've got sweat on me, uh, before I, the body temperature is raised and this does also act as a nice little primer. Um, you are getting a little bit of a heat effect from the red light panel. Of course, it's nothing like the sauna, uh, which I'll go into there. So that's how I sometimes do it. Not all the time, but that's how I will sometimes do it. So for instance, if I am doing the dishes and I come and turn the sauna on and I've got to go finish the dishes, I won't have time to do this. I'll come straight into the sauna. But then like the next day or the next morning, I might do my red light therapy session. Uh, 
If you're wondering whether I get out and dry myself off and do a, a session here, um, no, I don't do that. I'll only ever use this before the infrared sauna, uh, never after or never during. Um, again, I've sort of touched on those points as to why. I'm not saying this is the best way and it's what you, sh you should be doing, this is just what I do and um, it seems to work well for me. Hey, so just an update. I ran this video past my team here at alexfigures.com and I said, hey, just send through your comments and criticisms. And I got some really interesting feedback and I wanted to, um, I've taken it on board and I wanted to share that with you guys before this video went out to the world. So, so the first thing was in regards to red light and near infrared light penetration uh, on the body on a, on a sweaty skin surface. So for instance, I said I don't use my red light therapy panels when I'm in my near infrared sauna because of the sweat and the light isn't going to be pen uh, isn't going to be absorbed that well in, on the body or penetrate the body for instance. Um, but I was showing some data to suggest the the opposite of that and it was data looking at um, near infrared light and an even visible light penetration in, in salt water you know so obviously it's water but it's water that's got minerals in it as well and sure it wasn't um 100 but it was still the levels were still very very high and that was going down quite a depth now sweat on the skin it's not necessarily everywhere it might just be patches and of course it might only be one or two mils uh millimeters thick so that was quite interesting and um, I know some other people have, have always said that hey no that, that's, that's um, something you don't need to worry about and you could use it in the, in the sauna. Um, I know people have even talked about using uh, red light therapies on the outside of, of a shower. I know there's a whole issue there with electrical issues and safety and whatnot. But anyway, so that was, um, that was something that I did want to say to you guys. What does that change? I mean, it means that, yes, you could have this on the glass panel of a sauna uh, and use your red light therapy while you're sitting in there. Um, you could even sit it inside. Again, be careful with the electrical issues and whatnot. Um, and you should be getting a benefit. Are there, are there other biological contradictions? Perhaps, I, I don't know. At this point, I don't know. Um, but that's the first thing. The second thing I wanted to talk about is with my sauna choice, how typically I don't, I, I, I go with more of the far infrared and I stay away from the mid and even near infrared saunas because I'm getting my near infrared or some near infrared from my red light therapy panel. Sorry, it's just out of screen here, uh, out of view, but I've got my panel hanging up on this door. Um, and I said, you know, there have been some safety issues with exposure to some near infrared rays. Um, it turns out a lot of the downsides of that, the, the safety issues are due to high levels of near infrared uh, and for pro prolonged time. So maybe it's not as a big of an issue as I expected. Um, still though, I kind of like using my far infrared sauna for the far infrared light and the sweat effect and the heat and then keeping the near infrared at certain wavelengths uh, in the panel. So that's just me. So I guess if, if you're left uh, sitting there thinking, all right, well, what does this mean? What should I change? Well, I mean, for me, what am I gonna do differently? Probably nothing. Uh, maybe in the bigger saunas, I might look at putting a red light therapy panel on the outside of the glass or even sitting it inside, but that means I gotta wire it in. And I'm also a little bit nervous about, you know, moisture and the panels and electricity and all that. So. I probably will keep my routine exactly the same. I will turn my sauna on while that's heating up, do red light therapy. Uh, otherwise, some days I do red light therapy, some days I do sauna and just try not to overcomplicate it. But if you're wondering what you can do, I mean, hey, it's, it's entirely up to you. Like, the science, science is never settled, okay? And you're gonna find one thing that says this and then another thing that will show the opposite and it can get a little bit messy. So. At the end of the day, be a biohacker and experiment, test, see how you find, see how you feel. Maybe you do red light therapy in the morning for a week, and your sauna's in the evening. Use your bio strap, bio strap your aura, um, any other wearable you're using. See what happens to your HIV and sleep. See how you feel. See how those aches and pains are. See how your gym performance is. And then once you've got that data, try something different. Combine the two. Put the infrared on the glass door or inside. Um, and do them at the same time and again see what happens. I mean, that's the beauty of experimentation uh, But yeah, if you have any feedback or comments or views on this and you have some interesting um, studies or articles or you're in the space of um, Red light therapy saunas and you know a bit about the 
bio, the the changes that are happening within the body when exposed to these light waves um yeah leave the comments below because I'd, I'd love to hear them and i'm sure others viewing this would as well all right guys so i just wanted to add that on so um sorry if i have confused you but i wanted to put it out there before i posted that other video Thank <laughs> you.